Western Washington is one of the most beautiful places in America. One of the reasons we have such beautiful, steep mountains. That means we're tectonically active. And when you're building mountains, those mountains are also constantly falling. Erosion and landslides are one of the reasons or ways that uh, building mountains can actually fall back toward sea level. So because of that, Western Washington is landslide country unfortunately. Uh, back in October of 2024, in Bellingham, we had a day of record rainfall. What happened was along I-5, that triggered a landslide which slid into the northbound lanes, getting a semi-truck stuck in the mud and taking all day to clear out that mud to reopen I-5. Unfortunately, we are no strangers to landslide activity in western Washington. One of the reasons, and unsurprisingly, is because we have that steep terrain. What what goes up must come down, right? It's also rainy. Rain can trigger landslides. There's also a third reason, geologically speaking, that we are so landslide prone in western Washington. It's the loose glacial deposits. 15, 20 years ago, uh, 15, 20,000 years ago, there was a massive ice sheet, a uh, big glacier over the Puget Sound area. When that receded, uh, all of the sand and rocks and clay and silt that it scooped up well, that just kind of deposited upon itself in these loose fill or into kind of a loose soil mixture, and that can be very prone to landsliding. Now, I spoke with UW professor David Montgomery. He's a geomorphologist, and he says there's kind of a loose trigger. You can say around three inches of rainfall during a storm event, and you'll start to see more of these events around, say, Seattle, although each landslide has its own unique properties, and rainfall would be one of those. And it's not just rainfall, though earthquakes and erosion at the base of a hill by a river or just by stormwater can also trigger these landslides. Uh, so talking about water-induced landslides, now there's a few reasons why when we see a lot of rainfall, we see more landslides around western Washington. Uh, one of the reasons is because landslides are triggered by the weight of the land that really just wants to seek equilibrium. It wants to go downhill. When you add rainwater, you're adding weight to that soil. The soil is porous, so it takes in the weight of the water. That's extra driving force downward, and that can be enough to trigger a landslide. But there are also other factors. If you have a lot of like clay or maybe silts that can hold together better, and then you saturate them or super supersaturate them with extra water that could decrease its strength, decrease its ability to hold together. That could lead to unstable slopes. And then finally, water seeping deep into the slope can decrease friction. Here's what I mean by that. This is a schematic of a landslide by the USGS. It's kind of circular shaped along the failure plane and then spills out into the slope below. Now, what's driving the landslide is the weight of the soil. Uh, but this right here, is the failure plane. You get movement along the failure plane. So what's keeping that from sliding before the landslide actually happens is the friction between this mass of land and the soil below. When you get water seeping into this plane, you can say you kind of lubricate that surface, making it more likely that this landslide will trigger itself. But that's really just a loose analogy or description because what's really going on here is you're filling this with a lot of water that actually adds to the buoyancy and can add a little bit of an upward force and that can decrease the friction, what's holding this landslide mass back and allow this landslide to actually trigger and past the point of no return, if you will. So there are more than one type of landslides, okay? The rotational landslide is what I just showed you, but you can get a more translational type of landslide, more of a rectangular mass of soil that would slide directly down the slope. A block side, when you'd had more rocky material that just kind of slides on its own into more of a pile of rubble as those rocks break up. A steeper slope with rocks could lead to a rock fall or even a topple if the rocks were to fall outward or if the rocks were to be underlain by a weaker material, like a weak sand, say. You could have a debris flow where a muddy mixture of water and soil flows down a stream channel. You can also have a quickly moving and often violent debris avalanche, a steeper hill where the where the mud and the earth come down very quickly. You can have an earth flow a little bit slower as the earth seeps or oozes down the side of a hill. Earth 
Landslides can creep as well downward, and lateral spreading can also happen uh, along a more gently sloping surface. So a wide variety of landslides possible here in western Washington and really all across the world. And it's just another hazard, I guess, that we have to deal with in this beautiful state. You could say we have a trifecta of natural hazards. We have landslides, we have earthquakes, and we have volcanoes. But the more we know about them, the more we can keep ourselves safe from them.